There's something about uh, <clears throat> that just came to me <clears throat> while I was praying that, um, you know, honestly, we take ground with our mouths. You know that? We take ground. You know, the Lord spoke to me here a couple years ago and he said, it's time for the body of Christ to take ground and occupy. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the Bible talks about there to, to, pick, to pick up your tent pegs, your tent stakes, and to expand those, expand your borders, expand your territory, to take new ground, to take over. And I had that vision of, of us just picking up our tent stake as the body of Christ and moving forward. And as we move forward, that we begin to cover over the darkness with light. <laughs> Amen. And so uh, God is raising up uh, the body of Christ. God's raising up a people that are uh, getting after it and that are really starting to understand why we're put here on earth. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, me and you are on the same page, brother. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I know many of you are too, but we're put on earth not to have the American dream. I put on earth, have the biggest house, the nicest cars, the best, uh, whatever. Be famous, be popular. You know, that's not, we're not put on earth for that. We're put on earth to live in the kingdom on earth. Amen. And to be the kingdom on earth. Amen. And to love others on earth as Christ loved others, to bless others, to help others, to preach the gospel, to minister the word of the Lord at, at, at all expense your, for your life, for anything. It doesn't matter. We're to just to give, to give, to give the gospel. That's why we're put here on earth. It's sad that a lot of Christians miss that and don't understand that or they're not taught that. But we're simply here to give Christ to people. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's, that's our life yeah. as a Christian. Yeah. You know, and um, I'm, I'm learning that uh, family's good. Uh, activities with your family's good. You know, things we like to do, hobbies. <clears throat> things like that. God enjoys those things. He wants us to enjoy our time here with the stuff that we enjoy and things like that. But when it comes really fully down to it, it's, it's living like Christ yeah. and doing what Christ wants us to do. Amen? Yeah. That's the key. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that sometimes, you know, folks will even have to leave their secular jobs to do what the Lord's called to do. I've seen people do that before that have answered the call to God in their life. And, and God even has people move to different cities and different states and He'll call him for a certain purpose. Some people I've known over the years, he's called them to move to a different state for like two years just to minister to a group of people and then leave. Just to get some people saved in this one area of the world and then they leave. That's how God, God does things like that. Oh yeah. You know, and I'm not saying that you're going to be that person. I'm just saying that we've got to be open to whatever the Holy Spirit wants us to, to go. I was talking with Dad about this, and I've been talking to my wife about this, about my personal <coughs> life, and I'm transparent, and I don't care. You know, I'm just a human being like everybody else, but, you know, I... <clears throat> I'm right now, even in my own life, seeking God, searching out who am I? You know, what, what, what else is there to this ministry, God? Is this it? Is there more? Do I need to do something else? Do I need to move? Do I need to, what is there, what, what's going on? I'm searching myself right now, and I'm wanting to know who I am and who, what, what God really fully does have for me. Even though I do have peace at where I'm at and things like that right now, I'm not leaving or anything like that. I'm just saying I want to know and make sure that I'm on the right page and I'm doing what I need to do and I'm not going out and doing something I don't need to do. But I want to be right on time with the Lord. I want to be on the same road that He's on. Amen? So we should be doing that constantly in our lives just to make sure. But, you know, I really believe that, <clears throat> that we are put here on this earth to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to every creature we come across, if possible. Amen. And I know that we can't go up and jerk people into the gospel and make them get saved and all that kind of stuff. But I'll tell you right now, some of you right now, I know this by the Spirit of God because it's happening to me. He's had you working with one person for a while now. There's a person at work or there's somebody where God's been using you to minister to that person for like maybe even a year now or maybe even a couple years. You haven't quite led them to the Lord yet, but you've been, God's been using you to love on them and to, to nurture them and to help them and to bless them and see that, that Jesus is in you. And they're starting to see that. And that, that time's coming where they're going to, uh, you're going to reap the harvest in that person's life. So just stay encouraged with that. Amen? Whoever you are. Praise the Lord. Turn me over to Acts chapter 1. Uh, literally like five minutes <clears throat> before Dad said what he said when he got up here about the 120 that stayed around in the upper room and all that, the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to speak on that tonight at Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2. Isn't that cool how God does stuff like that? Amen? And it just makes me feel uh, good because it's just confirmation for me that I'm hearing from the Lord. Amen? And, uh, you know, God is, is calling on a people 
to know his word, and he's calling on a people to be prayer people. And, uh, you know, if you've been around here long enough, you kind of got an understanding that we're prayer people here, that we take prayer really serious and we need prayer. We know that prayer is the foundation to any move of God. We know prayer is a foundation to any revival. We know that prayer is a foundation to have a good local ministry where you're really able to feed people that need to be fed spiritually. If you don't have a prayer, if you don't have prayer, if you're, if you're Christianity, your life of Christianity isn't founded on prayer, just forget it. It's rough. It's yeah. tough. I've learned that the hard way over my life. I've experienced that, so I understand that what I'm saying is correct tonight. But if you don't have a relationship with the Father, with prayer, uh, not only um, you know your own intimate time with the Father personally, but also as far as with the body of Christ and corporately, if you can't do that, it makes it hard sometimes because... You miss out on a lot of stuff, and sometimes you miss out on hearing what God's saying to the church, and you kind of, you know, you're kind of like you're you're kind of trying to play catch up all the time. And so um, I've, I've watched the Lord over the past several years, and I've learned this from Dad, and I've heard him talk about this my whole life. How that you know uh, prayer is the, is the, the most important thing you can have a foundation, and you know we have all kinds of different prayers we hear prayer talked about. You can sit here right now in your own mind and think about. There's all these different kinds of prayers you can pray. There's ways of going before the Father, all this kind of stuff. So we understand that. But what I'm talking about tonight is not only your own personal prayer life. I'm talking about corporate prayer for a region, for a ministry, for uh, a state. For whatever, a, a city, whatever, a, a, you know, a, a, what, whatever it is. That's what I'm talking about tonight. We have a, we have a very, uh, 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 what's a, a high importance. We stress really high uh, of an importance on prayer at yeah. this, in this ministry. Because I'm telling you, without it, mom and dad probably wouldn't even be so Madeira. Because, you know, just it's, I'm telling you that prayer holds you together, guys. Yeah. Yeah. It will hold your personal life together. And it will hold your ministry or whatever it is that you have, that God has for you. It holds it together. Prayer is so important. And um, praying in the Holy Ghost is really important. I know a lot of people say that tongues aren't for today, that they're of the devil. And it's just blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff. Well, I've never heard the devil speak in tongues. Every time I've heard the devil speak, it's always been in plain English, and I understood what he's saying every time. Yeah. <laughs> so, praying in the Holy Ghost is super important. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I, I, we have always had a very strong foundation of prayer in this ministry. And um, God honors that. And, you know, I, we've been praying on Tuesday mornings here about four years now. And uh, it's been close to four years now. And I'm telling you, that prayer group on Tuesday mornings is growing. I mean, I got 25 people here a couple weeks ago. We're averaging 20 people a gathering on Tuesday mornings. And it's powerful. And I'll tell you something right now. If you have time to come and just lay out in here while prayer's going on and just get, get be a part of it, it'll bless you. I mean, it will bless you. If you have a chance to come, you need to come. We pray on Wednesday nights. We turned our Wednesday night meeting into a corporate prayer meeting where we come in here and we pray. And um, it's, it's just... It's a blessing. We need that. Amen. We have prayer before every service. Praise God. It's open to, to whoever wants to come. An hour before every service, Sister Norma's back there leading prayer. And so you can see that we have a really consistent uh, basis of prayer that we that we take seriously because we know that that's what's going to bring in what the prophetic word has said over this body, this, this church, this foundation. Here. Yeah. And so... I can't stand up here and preach and talk about other churches. I don't know anything about other churches. I don't know what's going on in there. I don't really know too much of what God's called that body to do. It's something important, something special. Praise God. I can only expound on what, who we are and what we're doing here because of what God has showed us. So prayer is very, very vital. Now look here. Jesus says here in Acts chapter 1, verse 1. It says, the, for, uh, the former account I made. Well, Jesus doesn't say this here, but he gets down here. He gets, he gets to talking here in just a second. But it says in verse 1, the former account I made. O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up after he, though the Holy Spirit had given commandments to uh, the apostles uh, whom he had chosen. Verse 3, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them uh, during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, verse 4, this is the promise of the Holy Spirit here. 
It says, verse 4, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which Jesus said, You have heard from me. Now that word wait there literally means while you wait, expect. Amen. While you wait, expect. Or it can mean this. To, uh, to expect with a view of being shown favor upon. Amen. To expect with a view of being shown favor favor upon. Now let me say this. I got that right there. What I just read to you right now, I got from the Lord in February of 2008 when I had cancer in my body. Amen. The Lord spoke that to me and He said, you wait. Some of you have heard me talk about this a million times. It seemed like through that whole year in 2008, almost every scripture the Lord led me to had the word wait in it. W-A-I-T. Yes. Not wait. That kind of way. But W-A-I-T, wait. Right. Thanks, God. Yeah. I'll just wait. Yep. How many of y'all, you know, enjoy like when you're in a hurry and your kid or your wife or your husband's in the bathroom and you're like waiting in the morning because you got to get ready. They're in there for like 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and you're waiting and you've got stuff to do. you got places to be. you got things to do. You know? Waiting's not fun all the time. <laughs> Turn the crowd. Yeah. We all are at some point, somehow, Amen. waiting for something. Amen. And so Jesus says, wait. And the Lord spoke that to me while I was going through that back in 2008. He said, look, Mike, I want you to wait and expect while you're waiting. But, but while you're waiting, just know that I'm getting ready to show favor upon you. And what was that favor I needed? Healing. Yeah. Amen. What is it you need? What's the favor you need while you're waiting for something? Yeah. Yeah. You're going through something right now. You're waiting. Yeah. The Lord's saying, look, yeah. look, look, Mike, look. Just be patient. Wait. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep speaking the word. Keep living the word. Keep believing it. Keep going. Keep obeying what I'm telling you to obey. But just wait and know that I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready, Mike. I'm getting ready to show you and, and, and put favor upon your life for what you need. But wait. And sometimes during that waiting process, you learn a lot. Yes. If you'll listen. If you let him talk to you. One of the major things he talked to me about in my life through that time, you've heard me talk about it, was, was love and compassion and this and that for the people and, and things like that. So I learned a lesson through that Amen. waiting period. So Jesus says, he says, he says the wait, and then he says here in, in, in verse 5, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, can you imagine that? Imagine you being one of those people that heard Jesus say that. Baptized in the Holy Spirit for now. What does that mean? I mean, we understand the, the submersion of water. And we understand that. Jesus knew about that. They knew about that from John the Baptist, you know, and things like that. They knew about, but they're thinking of baptized in the Holy Spirit. What is that? And it says in verse 6, Therefore, they had come... Together they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his authority. Right. Dad touched on this a little bit here this morning. Verse 8, But you shall, Jesus says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> Amen. I don't know if God's going to call you to Jerusalem, Judea, I don't know. But basically what he's saying here is, listen, folks, you're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, praise God. And you need to be ready to go out and do what I've called you to do. No matter where I tell you to go, you need to go and release that fire, release that power, release that anointing. Amen. People need to be people need to be baptized not only in water, but they need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire and speak in other tongues. Amen. They need that. Yeah. I've had several people over the years tell me that you don't need to do that. And I just don't even listen anymore. I can't right. even, I can't right. even like, argue. I don't even try to even explain it if they don't want to explain it. Because most of the time people just want to argue with you yeah. and prove that you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And I just don't have time for that stuff anymore. Yeah. 
phone. Yeah? So what do I do? Shapa pura ba ba ba. That usually ends it right there. Because then they know that I'm just not going to do it. Amen? So praying in tongues is huge. It's powerful. It's anointed. So he tells us that. Now look over here in verse uh, uh, 9. It says this is where Jesus ascended. Now when he has spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, <coughs> as Jesus went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Hallelujah. Glory. Verse 12. Then they returned to Jerusalem. From the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus. Is that how you say it? Alphaeus. And Simon, the, uh, I don't know, Zelot. 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 Zealot, Zealot, whatever. I'm glad my name's not that name. He was zealous. Zealous, he was zealous. And Judas, uh, Judas the son of James. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Now listen to this. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. The number of names was about 120 and said, Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before the, by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity, and uh, 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 falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his internals gushed out. Now, that's pretty gruesome. Mm -hmm. But we get the picture. And it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem, so that field is called, in their own language, a kale dama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let... And let another take his office. Now, Jesus, I don't want to get off into all that. What I'm trying to show you here, the point I'm trying to, to get you to see here. I mean, I didn't have to read all the rest of that, but I did anyways. But Jesus spoke to 500 people. The account testifies to 500 people saw him, heard him. Guys, you need to go into the upper room. Just like John the Baptist baptized, well, the Holy Spirit's coming few days here. You need it. So you need to get up in the upper prayer room and you need to pray. And you need to wait for it. You need to wait for it. You need to wait for it. God is so good about saying something plenty ahead of time. Yes. Yes. He, some of you in here, well, probably almost every person in here, I'm sure of it, had, at one point or another, God has said something to you. And you could probably think of something right now that he said to you maybe a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, ten years ago. And you're still waiting for that. It hasn't came yet. The season hasn't came yet. Dad talked about that this morning a little bit. Time is the seasons. But that doesn't mean you give up because it hasn't came yet. See, I know, me personally right now, some of you might... Uh, uh, identify with this, so I'm going to say. But me personally right now, God has just shown me a lot and said a lot to me and over the years and this and that. And it's like, I know they haven't came yet and they're out there still and I am hungry to see some of these things come to pass that God has shown me before. Amen. But it's a season. It's a time. And God's timing's perfect. He is never late. He's never early. He's always right on time. I mean, He's the one that created on time. Praise God. Amen. So he knows what he's doing. Amen. There was 500 people that heard Jesus. 120 of them obeyed him. Yeah. 120. That's crazy. Be one of those 120. Absolutely. If I was you, I could go so far to say, be one of those three that was really yes. close to him. That's what I was thinking. 
the sons of thunder. Peter, James, and John. Be one of, be one of them. Try to, try to pursue God so much that you want to be one of the top three. You want to be close to Him. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with wanting to be close to God. You're His favorite anyways. He favors you. He loves you. He wants you to, He wants to draw you in, man, to all the blessing, all the fullness of Him. He wants you to understand who you are in Christ. He wants you to see yourself seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1 there. He wants to see you blessed and provided and taken care of. Praise God. So be one of those 120. It always starts a good ministry, a good foundation, a good move of God, a good revival, a, a flourishing church, a flourishing ministry. See, I'm, don't let me forget that point that I'll come back to. But I'm thankful that my Christianity isn't just about going to church on Sunday. That's right. Because that's not even fully what it's even all about anyways. That's right. Your Christianity is you, one-on-one -on -one with God, you receiving Jesus into your life, admitting that what He did on the cross was for you, you receiving Him as your Savior, you giving Him your life, and it starts from there. And then usually what God will do is so pull you and bring you to a people that He knows will bless you and help you and help sharpen you and raise you and help feed you. He'll bring you to that local flock, that local congregation. We do need pastors in our lives. I don't care what so-and-so says about, nah, you can just do it at your house. Well, I guess you can. I guess you can worship the Lord's house. I worship the Lord in my house more than I do here. But we still need some leaders in our lives. Amen. We still need people. I need you. You need me. Amen. We need each other. We do. You have a peace. You have information. You have some spiritual growth. You have something that God has shown you that you need to minister to me. And vice versa, praise God. We feed off each other. We love each other. We grow from each other, praise God. Amen. If it wasn't for some of you, I don't even know if I'd be in the ministry today. Yeah. Because of your prayers. That's right. I'm just being straight up honest. Amen. I know there's people here that don't ever even tell me they pray for me, and I know they pray for me. Because yeah. I need it. And I'm thankful for that. We don't have to tell everybody all, this, all the time everything. That's right. I'm pretty private, to be honest with you. My per I mean, I share a lot of personal stuff, but when it comes to who I pray for and how I pray for people, I don't talk about that with nobody. Not even my wife. That's just me. I don't need to. You don't need to blather around. It's just it's no one's business. Right. <laughs> That's true. Don't shut me down because I'm preaching. Amen. Yeah, yeah. But see, <clears throat> we have, we have this. This I am so blessed to be called to be a pastor in this ministry because we have such a strong foundation of people here. And I'm constantly talking about that with my wife. I'm constantly talking about that with mom and dad. And how I know if like 400 people showed up at one service at one time, I know that there are at least 20 people that I can point and say, I need your help today. Can you help minister? Amen. And they would do it. Amen. It's powerful. We've got a good group of people to go to this, 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 this fellowship here. Thank you. We, we really do. Amen. We work well together. We gel together. We flow together. We love God. You know, we're here for the right reasons. We're here because we want to see Madera saved. And we're pressing. We're, we're praying. We're, we're speaking. We're doing our part outside the walls of our jobs. That are, you know, in, in the marketplace or whatever God has us doing. We're doing what we need to do. It's weekly that I hear at least one or two or four things weekly that I hear of how God. It's actually more than one. I guarantee you every week. That I hear something happening outside these walls with somebody that goes here that was able to do something for somebody else. Praise God. Yeah. That is huge. That's good. That's big. Either pray for somebody, let them to Christ, lay hands on them for sickness, or bless them financially, or was able to do something for somebody. That's huge. And I love hearing about it. Because it makes it, it, it excites me and makes me want to go forward even more too. Because Amen. it excites me that we're flowing together in this in this fellowship. Yes. And I know there's a lot of folks that are missing that are hardcores here, praise God, that are here all the time, praise God, that love God, they're not here tonight. 
But folks, I'm telling you that we have a good, solid foundation at this church. And we are at a, po a point and a place now where anything can happen, guys. Because there's a lot of people in this fellowship that have been trained, that are ready to go, that are just that are already working out in the fields outside these walls. But man, when people start flooding into this hospital and needing healing and needing care, praise God. Thank God that we have a lot of people here that's going to do the job. Hallelujah. Amen. And I know that as a pastor and as a leader in this congregation. And I know that there's more. I know that things are getting ready to grow. I'm not about having the biggest church. I don't care about numbers. I don't, I, I've been trained that way. I've been raised that way. That's how I've lived. That's how I've watched my parents live. That's how. That's the kind of people that we hang around. That's just the kind of I'm not concerned about that. I'm not worried about that. All I know is that I want to see people born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I want to see people that are dying of diseases get healed. I want to see families be restored. I want to see God. I want to see drug addicts be delivered. I want to see alcoholics be delivered. I want to see all kinds of stuff happen for the glory of God. So however many that takes, if it's two people a week, if it's five people a month, if it's 400 people yearly, whatever, I don't care. I just want to see God move and I want to be used to His fullness. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. what matters. Amen. Amen. And the awesome thing about it is I'm surrounded by people in this room tonight that really, if you look deep down inside, you know that that's who you are and that's what you want to. Amen. Yeah. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It's a great thing. It's a blessing. It's almost like it, it helps me. I feed off of it. Because I see. I see the excitement. <laughs> Some of you guys. I know because I talk to you. And you're just excited about where God's taking me right now. Yeah. And the things that he's wanting to do. You know, God's been talking to me about you, Tammy, since uh, last week. And, you know, he's been talking. I've talked to Dad about it to make sure that I was right on, on track about it. But the Lord spoke to me and said he's getting ready to promote you. Yep. Oh, you know, amen. promotion's coming in your life. Amen. And um, I, 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 I don't have a total thumb on it or whatever like that. And that's fine. God doesn't want to show me that's not none of my business. But I just feel like it's, it's um, you know, uh, not so much in the secular world. But he's getting ready to promote you with, with some spiritual things, you know. And it's not going to be something you're going to have to push for or try to make happen. It's just going to kind of fall in your lap. And you're going to be able just to do what you need to do concerning some of those things. So there's some promotions getting ready to come upon you. Amen. And you just flow with that when that time comes. Amen. So it's like, you know, sometimes the Lord will just do that. He wants to speak to somebody prophetically. But, you know, I believe that that is, I believe there's a big, big promotion coming to the body of Christ. I believe that. Amen. And, um. You know, it's a thing. I don't even know. It's like I can't even describe it, but it's 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 like um, it's like God's hand has came down, and it's like he it's like he has his hand. It's like I see him have his hand on the body of Christ, but it's like I see also him have his hand on each individual in the body of Christ. Amen. That makes sense. That's how I see it. Yes. And it's like he is, he's shifting us and positioning us for this end time harvest. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. And you know, let me say this. Guys, we do not have to fear anything that the devil is trying to do right now. Amen. 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 We do not. Amen. Our God. Is going to protect his people. Right. He will see to it that he'll do whatever it takes, just like he does in his word, it says in his word, that he's going to protect his people. Yeah. I saw I saw a, a word this morning that a man up here in Northern California had wrote out on social media. I came across it early this morning. He just posted it this morning. And he said last night he had a vision. And he said this vision, he saw intercessors. He saw them from the top of the state of Washington all the way down. The, 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 the west coast, along the coastline, all the way down, down around Mexico, the Gulf of Mexico there, around Texas, and all the way back up to the east coast of the, uh, uh, South Carolina coast, all the way up that way. He saw a line of intercessors, of people. He said, he saw, I saw the people, they had locked arms, and they had formed all the way down around our state, or around our nation, all the way back up. And he says, they were standing there. 
He said that the enemy was like out in the ocean. He was trying to break through that barrier to come back into our nation or to get into our nation. Hordes of demons and this and that. And he said all of a sudden, he said that the intercessors looked up to heaven. When they looked up to heaven, he said an army, yes. millions Amen. of angels. Yes. Yes. I feel the anointing saying that. Yes. I just see yes. through my body, man. Yes. It excites me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory, because it's the truth. But he said, multitudes of warring angels came and they stood behind the intercessors. And he said that their wings were touching tips. He saw this. And he said it was like they were just standing there. They were so full of peace that it was like, in other words, don't worry, guys. God has sent us here. Nothing's going to take place. We've got this. Amen. But you notice the intercessors. <laughs> it's the intercessors. Yep. Now, let's just be honest. I'll be frank with you. Not Frank. Frank's sitting back there. I'm not Frank. But I don't want to be Frank. I like Frank, but I don't want to be Frank. My name's Mike. Anyway, okay. Ernest. Ernest. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest. We are all intercessors. Yes. We really are. You know, I know that, I know that, and I, I don't want to make people mad, but, okay, you're, you're just a prayer person. You're not, an, I mean, you're not, you know what I'm saying? It's, you, you, you don't have some high calling to be an intercessor. We're all intercessors. We all pray. God will put people in certain positions to, to teach prayer, to help lead prayer, things like that. I'm all for that. I know that's true. It works. We have people in our church that do that. It's a good thing. I need that. We need that. It's awesome. But we all can intercede. Amen. We all can get on our face before the Lord and pray the will of God and cry out to God. We can do that. That's what intercession is. It's being led by the Holy Spirit in your prayer life, in your prayer time, praying out the will and the purposes of God. Yeah. Yeah. That's what intercession is. You are possessed by the Holy Spirit and you let Him lead you in your prayer life. That's interceding. You God can have you interceding for your family, for a city, for a state, for a person, whatever it is. But see, the great move of God, the last great awakening is getting ready to take place. We've already we're already at the edge. I think I believe it's already started. Oh, yes. It's kind of started around America. Things are happening. We're seeing it in the political realm. We're seeing it in the government realm. We're starting to see God maneuver and God's hand come in and do certain things. Whether you like the president or not, doesn't matter. God's doing what He's called Him to do. God's doing what we've been asking God to do in our nation to pull the evil out and to put people in there that actually really do talk about God and pray and love God and promote Jesus Christ. That's the people we want. So either you like it or not, I don't care. I'm just thankful that we have a president that will get up and say that God bless America. We are a nation, a Christian nation. We love God. We're going to do what God wants us to do. That's a blessing to me, praise God. I needed to hear that. I need that. As a Christian American, I need it. But I'm telling you, it goes beyond that. We're seeing God come into our nation. We're seeing God come into our nation. That's why the devil is flipping out. And a lot of stuff that he's doing makes no sense at all. It's totally dumbfounding. I can't even comprehend some of the stuff that takes place. Because Satan is the author of confusion, guys. Man. And everything he does does not make sense. Everything he does is rebellion. Everything he does is anarchy. Everything he does is anti-Christ. But see, I firmly believe that a lot of these people, they don't even know they're being ran by devils. They have no clue about God. They have no clue about the love of God. They have no clue about heaven. They have no clue about hell. They have no clue about the fear of the Lord. They have no idea what we know. But I'm telling you right now, there's going to come a shaking in this nation. And it's going to scare the hell out of a lot of people. And a lot of these people that we see acting the way they're acting are going to come to Christ. Because there's intercessors. Because there's people that are praying for them. Because there's people that are going out and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You think about it. You touch one person in your workplace. That could be the person that touches three households a year from now. And those three households, one person out of those three households 
could be a person that stands in Pakistan and preaches the kingdom of God to millions of people at some point. We don't think about it like that. We think about it, it's just us and we just got our own little area here and we're kind of, you know, having a little bit of effect here. No. It goes way beyond that. Way beyond that. And you think about it, that's why people call you personally and say, pray for my grandma. Pray for my dad. Pray for my, my brother. Pray for my sister. Pray for Aunt Susie. Pray because they know, they see the love of God in you. Guys, this is so much bigger than us. This is a kingdom thing. It's a God thing. And the cool thing is God will use us. He gives us that. He promises that in His Word. He'll use us if we yield to Him. But it's, it's so big beyond us. All we can do is our part. If you're the big toe, be the big toe. If you're the mouth, be the mouth. If you're the arm, be the arm. Just want to do fully what God has called you to do. Yes. Let that be your desire. Let that be 100% of your life. Yes. It should go God, family, and ministry. Yeah. That should be your order. God, family, and ministry. You keep your relationship with the Father right. He'll help you with your family. Yes. Absolutely. He will. Now, you know, you might have to work with something for a while, or, you know, because people have their own will and they make their own choices, things like that. But you keep serving God, He'll help you with your family. Amen. Amen. And He'll use you in His kingdom while you're here on earth. God, family, and ministry. That's important. Important order. So it says here, look at verse 1, chapter 2. So they're up there, man. They're praying. They're like, God, okay, we're waiting. We're together here. We've listened to you. We've obeyed you. I mean, I can't really even imagine like exactly what they were doing up there, but they were up there just believing God. They were waiting. Like I said earlier, they were waiting in expectation for what Jesus said was going to happen. They were waiting for it. They probably didn't even know what it was going to feel like, what it was going to look like, what's going on here. Kind of like... You know, when you go and you get filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the first time, it's crazy because you're just like, okay, how do I speak in tongues? How does this work? You know, because it's, times. yeah, it three times. Because it's not a mental thing, it's a spirit thing. So you're just like, boom, and they're up there in this upper room, there's 120 of them. I mean, you can only imagine what was going on. And it says here that when the day of Pentecost, verse 1, had fully come, they were all filled with one accord in one place, praise the Lord. And it says that, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, praise God. Or you could say a violent tempest blast. That's what that means, a, a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gave them the utterance. Or we could say as the Spirit of the Lord gave them the words. Amen? So see, look. There was 120 that loved God. They put God first. They listened to God. They obeyed Jesus. Jesus right there saw a foundation. Saw a people. As he said to them, if you'll wait, I'll use you. I will birth something out of this prayer meeting. Yes. Out of this waiting meeting. Yes. Out of this sitting before the Lord meeting in the upper room. I will birth something out of this that will revolutionize the world and the New Testament church will start. I can't wait to shake those 120 people's hands and give them a hug and say, thank you. Yeah, it was because of your obedience that I was able to pray in the Holy Ghost when I needed to pray in the Holy Ghost. I was able, when I needed peace, and because I was in fear or anxiety, I was able to pray in the Holy Spirit and God brought peace. When I needed power to cast out devils, I was able to pray in the Holy Ghost because of your obedience. Now let me say this. You be one of those 120 and be obedient to the Lord. Because it will change somebody else's life. 
You've already changed people's lives, but why stop now? Why don't you change more? Why don't you be used by God to change more lives? Amen. Be that person when someone needs help and they're in the time of trouble, be that person that lays hands on them. Be that person that's able to pray over whatever the Holy Spirit wants you to pray over them. Be that person you're able to bless them with love and give them something financially or something that they need. Help me to need in their lives or something like that. Be that person. Amen. Be that obedient person. Now, I didn't share Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 1 tonight to talk about praying in tongues. That's huge. I shared this tonight, and my, my, my emphasis on this tonight is that there was a people that believed God. And I believe that we have a people here in this ministry, the Believer Church of Madera, that believe God. I believe that. That's why we've seen things happen in your personal lives, your ministries. We've, we've, we've seen the devil hit really hard and throw a bunch of curveballs at you and a bunch of stuff in your way. But we've seen you stand strong. We've seen you come out of it. And we've seen God heal your family. We've seen God heal diseases. We've seen miracles. We've seen all kinds of things. We've had dreams and visions and, and things take place and gifts of the Spirit move in our church and move in our lives. Because we have a people that are serious about what Jesus said and they truly want to see their community, their family, their region rocked by the anointing and the power and the love of God. Amen. They want to see that. And you know, church is a place where we come together to sharpen each other. And the fellowship. Amen. It's like Dad says it all the time to me. He said it actually before service to me tonight again. He said, This is church, this is a family. Yeah. And we're here to bless each other and help each other raise and raise each other up and bless each other and love each other. Yeah. So that way when we go out and we come across a dude that's strung out on meth and heroin and he really wants help. We're able to glean from what we've learned from my brother, or my sister, or my pastor, or somebody, or we've learned from the Word of God, and we're able to lay hands on that person and pray for deliverance. Amen. Amen. Because of what we learned here. Amen. It's big. Yes, it is. It really is. It's huge. I've learned so much by sitting in this church all my life, pretty much. I've been going to this church since I was nine years old. I'm 42. Sister Carol, pretty much same amount of time we've been going here. You were here day one, weren't you? No. Just no? About. Just about, real close. Yeah. I know Grandpa was here day one. <laughs> <laughs> but I've learned so much just by sitting in here. You know, even when I was an idiot kid, just rebellious and doing my own thing and not really wanting to be a preacher and I didn't really care. Okay, I got to go to church because mom and dad were making me go to church and that was my attitude. Even when I was like that, I was being fed. Yeah. Yeah. It was getting in me. Sitting in me. See, it was back before we had cell phones so I couldn't play on my cell phone. <coughs> church, you, know? you just had to sit there. I was probably thinking about baseball or thinking about going to do something or whatever. Yeah. But the word was getting in me. Yeah. See, some of your kids aren't here tonight. Some of you guys. But they were here. It was getting in them. Yeah. It was getting in them. Some of them was in my youth group for years. And believe me, I preached to them every Wednesday night and every Sunday night. We had to be twice a week. I preached to them every Sunday night and every Wednesday night. I preached the word. I preached the word. I preached the word. I preached to live life. I preach, serve God. I preach, follow God. So it's Him. Yeah. We're going to see a lot of those guys come back, yeah. by the way. And it's coming close, too, because I've been sensing stronger and stronger. Yeah. Yeah. I think my wife are talking about that today. They're coming back. Yeah. Some of those kids that, are, that were in my youth group and that have been gone for a while, they're going to come back. Yes. They're going to come back serious, too. Yeah. They're going to come back. Jim, they're going to come back. Tammy, they're going to come back. Amen. The kids are doing well. Yes. Going to come back. Over here. They're going to come back. 
I pray for uh, I pray for those guys. That's right, me too. God, you'll see your son too. But I'll be here. He's gonna come back. Yes. Yeah. He's gonna get in all the way. Yeah. It's on my heart. Yes, Sean. sir. Yes, yes, yes. Me too, Michael. Because I think about that a lot. I pray about these guys a lot. Amen. I speak of them. Frank was in my youth group for a number of years. He's here. Jesse was in my youth group. She's back. Let me just have here, Jesse. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name. So, Brandon, your kids are coming back fully into you. Yes, they are. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for Jesse. It's been such a blessing to see her here the past yes. month or so. Lord. Yeah. I'm thankful for that. But Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> the Lord is just going to restore quickly in your life. And uh, it's going to be like you've never missed. It's going to be like you've never missed anything because it's in you. <clears throat> it's all there. It's coming back to you. But actually, it's, you're going to grow pretty fast. And at times, it's going to be kind of like, oh, man, Lord, I don't know. Slow down. But when you get like that, just get before the Lord, talk to Him. And if you need to come talk to, you know, Dad or me or whatever, we'll talk. But things are going to speed up spiritually in your life. Mm -hmm. And those those gifts that He's given you are going to start opening up more. And the body of Christ is going to need you in those gifts. Yeah. So don't try to make those gifts happen or anything like that. Just let them flow. They'll, they'll grow in you. That's how it works. If you're open to them, they'll grow. You'll get more sensitive to them and you'll have an understanding of them more as, they, as, as you grow in those. But at first, just let the Lord help you with them. It'll help you grow in them. So Lord, I thank you in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. Thank you for the anointing on her life, my sister's life, Lord. Been a part of her life for a long time. and I'm just blessed to see her back, Lord. And yeah. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord, as I'm praying for Jesse, I'm praying for all the other kids in here that I named earlier, yes, Lord. Lord. As I'm holding her hand in agreement right now, Lord, we pray for yes. all the other kids yes. that were in my youth group, the, the names I mentioned to the adults here, the parents here, Lord. Yes. I thank you in Jesus' name. Yes. That Father, yes, she come up. Your day of visitation is coming. All of you that are in my heart right now, your day of visitation is coming. God is coming to visit you. Yes. In your nighttime hour. Yes. Or on your job. God is coming to visit you. Yes. Yes. And it's not going to be a thing of fear, but it's going to be a, a love thing, a peace thing when He comes. He's either going to come in a dream, he's going to come with a still small voice. He's going to come with an audible voice. He's going to come somehow, but he's going to get their attention. And it's going to mark them. And it's going to change them. Lord, thank you for an encounter with you, Father. For all those guys, all those kids, Lord. All those, those, those young men and young women, Lord. That are on my heart, that all the parents of here are representing them, Lord. I thank you for visiting them, Lord. I thank you for the God encounter. Yes. And I say in Jesus' name that they will fulfill the will, the plan, and the purpose, Father, that you have for them. And their families will come right along. And they'll be a part of this third great awakening, God. Yes. And they'll be flourishing. They'll flourish. They'll flourish. The families will flourish. Thank you, Holy God. Thank you, Holy God. We declare that with our lips tonight. We say that they will flourish in the kingdom. You foul devil, you take your hands off of them right now. You shut your mouth. You loose them. We break your power. Spirit of confusion, go from their minds in the name of Jesus. And we release the peace of the Lord right now into their minds. And we say in Jesus' name that angels will visit them in their nighttime hour. 
that your peace will visit them, Father, that heaven will come down upon their lives, and they'll know and they'll hear your beckoning, God. They'll hear you whistling for them, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Not too many days ahead, this will take place. Not too many days ahead, this will take place. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, but that's what I heard the Lord say. Not too many days ahead, this will take place. Something's going to happen. And here's the thing. They might not even share it with you, parents, for a while. But I know in my spirit right now, I'm speaking this prophetically right now, by the Spirit of the Lord, that God is going to encounter them. Because it's time for them to play their part. He's never left them. He hasn't left them. He's been with them this whole time. Talking to them. There's been angels ministering because of prayers. They will come back and serve the Lord and flourish. Flourish. I keep hearing that word flourish. A flourish in the kingdom. Amen. A flourish. So you speak that over them. God, I thank you that my children flourish in the kingdom. And be what they're created to be. In the name of Jesus. Amen. See, I didn't fully know why. The Lord wanted me just to hold her hand and pray with her, but now I see why. You led that right into that. But there's just an agreement there, like as if I'm touching your kids. Yes. I guess that's how it would be. Yes. Amen. Not that I'm the Savior or anything like that, but there's just something that God wanted us to intercede and pray out. Amen. Right now into their lives. Yes. Yes. Lord, I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. I thank you that it's so. I thank you that it's sealed by the word of the Lord. And I thank you that as we decree and declare it, as we say, Lord, that it will be established. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> now, there's some folks in here tonight that it's a very simple thing here. I keep hearing this in my spirit right now. It's a very simple thing here that God has been giving you, some of you some words to say over your family. Yep. Yes. Take heed to those. Yes. Take heed to those things. If you have to write them down and keep them in your pocket, just to remind yourself until you get into that habit of speaking them, then do whatever you need to do. But he's giving you some words to say over maybe just maybe your children, your, your husband, your wife, or maybe just uh, your marriage or your kid, whatever. He's giving you some words to speak, and he, he gives you those words because there's life in them. Right. And as you speak them, you're speaking the Word of God. And the Word of God brings life. So you need to take heed to those. And you need to Obey the Lord when it comes to that and start using your mouth. Because your mouth destroys the kingdom of darkness, guys. Amen. The Word tells us that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Father, I'm so thankful for this foundation here. <clears throat> Lord, I'm thankful for my brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. Lord, I just honor every part that they play here tonight. Whatever the part is, some I know what they do, some I don't know what they do. But Lord, I honor their part in the body tonight, God. And Lord, I speak the blessing of the Lord over them. Lord, I thank you that the gifts that you've given us, the heart that you've given us, I thank you that it grows. That our gifts grow. That things grow, Lord, to bring you glory, Father. And there's just new realms that God wants to open in some of your guys' lives. There's new realms of the Spirit. New things that He wants to take you into. As you get before Him. So you need to just... Maybe be a little bit more diligent in setting some time aside to get before the Lord, just you and Him, 
in a locked up space or somewhere where it's quiet or somewhere where you can get away, just you and him. And just get before him because he wants to open up some new realms of the spirit in your life. Some things he wants to do in you. That he wants to use you for. I don't know how else to say it. That's just how I'm hearing it and seeing it. And that makes sense to several of you in here tonight. I know that. Amen. And it's not about, you know, uh, uh, you know, just some, some, oh, I got to do this. It's about just you being open to Him. Now, I don't know about you, but there's times where I've got to set myself aside and get out of the house or get away from noise and all that and just to get before Him in quietness. But He's wanting to take some of us into some new stuff. That he has for us because it's time. I don't want to miss the day of my visitation, man. <laughs> I want to hear him. I want to see it. I want to know it. I want to do it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that we're that 120, Lord. We choose from this day forward to obey you. We come together in unity. We come together wanting to know your will, your plan, your purpose, God. Not only for our lives as individuals in the body of Christ, but for the body of Christ. We want to know what you want us to pray out. We want to know what you want us to do. We want to know where you want us to go, what you want us to say. We want to know, Lord. That's our heart, God. Lord, I thank you that that open door is open. And we will follow you through that door, Lord. With no fear, Father. We see those intercessions. We see the armies of angels protecting this land. And you're getting ready to pour out the greatest awakening that this world has ever seen in the United States of America. And we're going to see the harvest in. And we're going to be a part of those harvesters. Harvesters. I call you harvesters. We're harvesters in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just see that wheat in the wind. It's ready. I see an army of the Lord just going out and just bringing that wheat in. Just gathering up the wheat, gathering up the harvest of souls. New believers, newcomers to Christ. It's going to start happening all around us. It's all around us. It's there for the taking right now if we'll just pay attention. Jesus is the answer. Amen. Lord, let people see Jesus in us. Yes. Let people see compassion. Let them see love. Let them see you, Jesus, in us. We can minister to those, Father, that are in need. Open that door more for us, God, to evangelize and to help others that are struggling, God. I ask you for that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Yeah? Do you have something to say here? Yeah. This whole year, you've heard me say this before if you've been around here for a while. This whole year is a year of shifting spiritually for our nation, for the body of Christ, for individuals, for anybody that will that will walk in this by faith. It's a year where things are shifting. Now, some things are going to shift whether we like it or not, and it's just going to happen because God's doing that. But he began to show me how that the, the Jewish holidays this year are 
prophetic mile markers that something on those days prophetically would be released uh, on the in the day in the first the New Year's Day the Feast of Trumpets. Without going into a lot of detail, the Lord began to show me about this this season we're coming into. It's the the season that. Uh, it's, it's like the Bible, Jesus said it would be like the days of Noah. It's where things shift and things begin to happen in a more radical way, good and bad in the earth. And we've seen that happen. And then on the Day of Atonement in October, or in, uh, it wasn't October, it was after that. The Lord began to, uh, he talked to me on that day and he showed me how that the spiritual giants that had held this land in bondage and held this nation in bondage and held people's lives in bondage, uh, just like with Israel in the in Canaan land, he said those giants have started something, but they can't finish it. Amen. And just like Goliath starting something and not being able to finish it, those giants are coming down. Right. And he was talking to me specifically about California. Yeah. You're going to see the spiritual giants that have ruled this nation and promoted sin and promoted perversion and promote, promoted things that are going to cause a curse to come on us. Those things are, are broken and they're going to fall. Amen. I don't know how long it's going to take, but it's going to happen. Yeah. And then uh, we just had Passover. Passover, of course, is about the, the Lamb of God. It's about uh, sin being forgiven. It's about, uh, you know, it's the type and shadow of you and I coming out of the devil's Thank kingdom Lord, yeah. and coming into God's kingdom, being set free to have what God has for us. On the day, first day of Passover, the, new, the, the Supreme Court man was elected that was put on the Supreme Court that's probably going to be instrumental in putting abortion to death yeah. in this nation. I'm, you just mark, you run it down and I said, you may think I'm an idiot or a fool now, but you watch. Abortion is going to end right. in this nation. It's happening. The, the, the spirit of Baal, which Baal worship, is all about killing your children and sexual perversion. And since the 70s, that's what the devil's promoted because he knows that if we live in that long enough, God will be forced to judge us. If, if we stay there. And God in His mercy has come to us this year. And He's breaking these things off because of the prayers of the saints. But I said all of that to say this. That Pentecost is coming up right in front of us. And I've been aware for a few weeks now. That God is wanting, to, wanting us to hit another <coughs> prophetic mile marker. Where something happens in our life. To like It's like a re-baptism of the Spirit. Or a fresh wind of the Holy Ghost coming. The fresh fire of God. Yes. Something that causes the initial experience that you walked in. That maybe, you know, the Bible talks about stirring yourself up. Stirring up the Holy Spirit in you. And that has the connotation of fire that has gone down to coals. And it needs to be stirred up. Wind needs to be blown on it. So it can flare up and, and blaze again. But we're coming up right now to a time... Where God is wanting to do that in the lives of people. Yes. Amen. But we're going to have to, and I'm sure that's why Mike preached on the 120 tonight. We asked the Holy Spirit to lead us, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is telling us, if you will be like the 120, if you will wait on me in prayer with expectation, yeah. if you will get in that place of looking to me, I'm gonna, you're going to encounter me in this season, in this this Feast of Weeks is what the Jews call it. This Pentecost time. And there's going to be a new, fresh breath of God's uh, wind blow upon your life and your situation. And the fire of God come to you. And the Holy Ghost is going to enable you to move in a way, in a place in Him. Yes. That you've never moved in before. He's restarting some things. He's taking us to a higher level in some things. Yeah. So this is from God. Now... The hundred, like Mike said, there were 500 people that saw Jesus after he rose from the dead. But yet, when he said, go wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power on high, for 10 days they had to wait. There were only 120 of them were willing to do that. So, what God's saying to us tonight is, I've got this for you. Do you want it? Yeah. Are you willing to just adjust your life? I'm not telling you how long to pray or what to do. Just go home and say, Lord, what do you want me to do concerning this? And he'll, he'll tell you. Yes. He'll show you. But waiting on him, praying, letting him talk to you, positioning yourself like Jesus told him. Because there's a fresh wind of the Holy Ghost that's going to blow.
across your life and across this nation. Hallelujah. I'm not saying it's going to happen right on the day of Pentecost. I don't know. But I know this, that we're in the season of renewing and refreshing. And God is going to bring us as a people, as a nation, as the church, back into our foundational place where we can fulfill our destiny as a nation. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the angels of God. Thank you. Lord, those young people we were praying about, to me yeah. they're young people. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord, I thank you that they are encountered God yes. the Holy Ghost. Yes. They encountered God the Holy Ghost. Yes, thank you. Father. Just like your angel told John G. Lake that night to have people to, to preach about Acts 2, to encourage people to seek after Acts 2, because it's the only thing that will satisfy the human heart. We thank you, Lord. We know that there are winds of war. We know there are winds of strife. We know there are all kinds of things in the earth right now. But your spiritual winds are much stronger and greater and more powerful. Your fire burns and purifies and cleanses. <clears throat> so, Lord, we look to you. We look to you. Help us to position ourselves to receive this, Lord, to step into this. And thereby, our families and all those, God, that you've given us can step in as well. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. They're coming in. You just watch what I'm telling you. They're coming in. They're coming back and they're coming in. Acts 11 here, God showed this to me this morning and I didn't know why, but he brought it back to me right now. This is why. This is what we're talking about. Acts 11, um, it says here... Uh, uh, this chapter here is in my in my in my Bible. It, it's it's defined as a Peter defends God's grace, and it says here in Acts eleven verse one. It says, "Now the apostles and brethren who were in Judea, Judea heard uh, that the Gentiles had also received the word of God, and when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of those of circumcision contended with him, saying, verse three, you went into uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter explained it to them in order from the beginning saying, verse 5, I was in the city of Joppa uh, praying and in a trance I saw a vision an object descending like a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners and it came to me when I observed it uh, initially and considered I saw four footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. <laughs> now this was done three times. There's three visions here he had. This was done three times, and in all were drawn up again into heaven. Now, look at verse 11. At that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was having, or where I was having been sent to me from Ces I don't know how to say that. Caesarea. Verse 12. Then the Spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. Now listen to this, verse 13. And he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house, who said to him, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and your whole household will be saved. I don't care how God's got to do it. He's going to do it how He needs to do it. If He needs to send an angel yes. to go to your kids or to go to your loved ones or whoever you're contending for, praise God, praying for and speaking over, He's going to do whatever it takes. And if He has to send... Look, let's just say, Peter's awesome. He's popular. He was a popular disciple. If He has to send Benny Hinn, if He has to send... You know, somebody like that. Billy Graham. I don't know. I'm just using people that are, are well known. If he has to send somebody to their 
If he has to have them bump into him in a restaurant, yep. he'll do whatever it takes to see to it yes. that your children, that your loved one, whoever it is, Amen. will come in. Amen. If he has to take you up into a vision like he did Peter here and take and go into a trance and into a vision here and see that just to assure you or whatever to encourage you that your kids are coming back or your family or your loved ones coming back he'll do whatever he takes because he loves you Amen. Michael can I share one thing real quick okay? yeah before church I just you know the word's established by two or three witnesses right? established by two or three witnesses right okay. Before church, I gave those exact scriptures to Jessica because God had been giving them to me. Where, yes. The Acts 11? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have proof. I hear wow. It. I gave it to her before church. Hallelujah. Because I've been having that vision of the sheep coming down, pieces, or rise Peter to eat. Wow. And the angels came, and you can ask her. Okay, I yeah, that's what I saw when we were here that Tuesday morning that I was here. I saw okay. a black veil coming off and a white veil dropping down. Yeah, so like what we just read here. Wow. Isn't that awesome? See, the Lord gave me that that's what it was, the number eleven. Yeah. Yeah. I kept getting the number eleven last night. And then I'm like, okay, I was sitting here in church this morning going, okay, number eleven. And I was like, nah, people are wanting to get out of here and go eat. I'm not gonna take time to give that word of knowledge out. But I wasn't like being totally impressed by God to do it. I know when I am and when I'm not. I just didn't feel like I really had to give it this morning. But when I came here tonight, it was back to number 11, number 11. And then as I was standing up here, and Dad's talking just a second ago, it was like Acts 11. And the guy said, that's the number 11 I'm giving you. I gave it to you this morning. That's why I gave you 11. And it was these. Yep. Okay, so see, the Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. Listen, I mean, it says here, look at verse 15. And as I begin to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. As upon us at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Now, you notice... You can be speaking what we declare tonight. When I was praying for Jesse and I was holding her hands and we started to pray for your children and people like that. Listen, as we started to pray that, the Holy Spirit will fall upon them. Yes. God will do that. Yes. How many of y'all have ever been convicted about something before? And it's like, oh, okay, God, you know. It's not a fun feeling, you know what I mean? But see, the Holy Spirit in His yeah. mercy and His love will do it. As He began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. Then I remember, verse 16, then I remember the word of the Lord, how He said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as He gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they became silent. And they glorified God, saying, Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Hallelujah. God will do whatever He has to do to see to it that the people that you've been speaking over and as a body here at this church, we've been praying for families for the past probably four or five years. Yes. There's been prophetic words. There's been declarations. We've prayed in our Tuesday morning prayer meeting several times over the past three or four years for families. Amen. And for, for, for them to come back and for there to be reconciliation between families and, and, and marriages and things like that. We've been praying, declaring, prophesying, speaking, declaring, praying, prophesying. We've been doing that for years. Yes. And it's starting to come to that point now that where it's getting ready to happen, guys. Man, that was the time. Yeah. It's getting ready to happen. So you receive that. Right. If there's an angel that has to show up, right. he'll show up. Right. Man. If an angel has to appear to somebody you don't even know, they don't even know your family, and this angel tells him, I want you to go to Madeira, to this house, or this store, or whatever, at this time. And this is who I want you to talk to. He'll do it, guys. He'll do it. He still does that today. I hear stories like that a lot. Yeah. Supernatural things like that. If he has to <laughs> translate somebody from Africa to over to Madera, California, Amen. Amen. he'll do it. He knows how to do it, guys. We just trust him. Yes. It's like my dad always tells me about my kids. And you guys can still do it today. 
It's your job to train them. It's God's job to promote them. Amen. We just train them. We love them. We talk to them. Bless them. And God will promote them, guys. Amen. I feel like some good stuff was accomplished tonight in the spirit, man. Amen. I really do. Yes, amen. Thank you. I feel way better now than how I felt when I came here tonight. Praise the Lord. I feel blessed. And we're in this together. Amen. Amen. God loves you guys. He loves Amen. us. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, Lord, we just thank you for this blessed Sunday you gave us today. With our meeting this morning and night. We thank you for our other brothers and sisters in this in this town, this community, Lord, that went and followed you today, Lord, went to church and we're a blessing to each other at other fellowships, Lord. We just Speak love and life and blessing over them, Lord. And Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ that the body of Christ of Madera, California flows as one. And Lord, I thank you for unity in the body in this city, God. Lord, I thank you that you just continue to stir our hearts to do what you've called us to do, Lord. I thank you that we discern who we are, what part we need to play in the body and the blood of the Lord. And Lord, we thank you for every word that was spoken tonight, God. We thank you, the Holy Spirit, you're working. The angels are being sent forth to minister. And that your hand, Father God, is upon us. And upon the things that even concern us, Lord. And we just give everything to you tonight, Lord. We love you, we thank you, and we thank you that your word is true. And we thank you for using us for your glory. Give us God appointments this week, Lord. Yes. Let us see, hear, and know who we need to talk to or love on or bless this week, Lord. Let our spiritual eyes be open to see who you want us to minister to this week, too, Lord. This week, Lord. And we'll yield to you, Holy Ghost. Use us for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.